If you have not chosen a primary care provider yet, stick with me because we are at Mile Bluff Medical Center with our second of two-part series discussing the importance of having a primary care provider. My guests will include Jim O'Keefe, President and CEO of Mile Bluff Medical Center, Kathy Kidd, Physician Assistant, and new patient coordinators, Cindy Bortz and Becca Lehman. From Mile Bluff Medical Center, this is Best of Wisconsin Health. Hey folks, welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Health. We're here at Mile Bluff Medical Center today in our two-part series, this is part two today, of learning about primary care providers and why that is so important to establish a relationship with a primary care provider. And I'm joined by a fantastic team of folks here today. Thanks for coming back. You're welcome. Appreciate okay, that. No let's, uh, in case anybody missed our part one, let's uh, kind of reintroduce ourselves to our viewers today. I'll start with you, Jim. Hi, I'm Jim O'Keefe and I'm President and CEO of Mile Bluff. I've been here for 14 years and a uh, great place to be. I've been in administration for over 30 years. Fantastic. Kathy? My name is Kathy Kidd. I'm a physician assistant. I work in family practice. Um, I've been here almost 23 years. It is the only job I've had as a physician assistant and I love it here. Fantastic. Cindy? I am Cindy Bortz and I'll be here nine years in July and I originally started at our new Lisbon Clinic, transferred to our Moston Clinic and my role is receptionist in our south upper floor and a new patient coordinator. Very good. Becca? Uh, I'm Becca Lehman. I uh, work in the main clinic registration. I'm also on the new patient coordinator line with Cindy as well and I've been here less than a year so about nine months so I'm pretty new to the facility. But you have a lot of expertise and a lot of, you've experienced a lot since, since coming here. And we've kind of talked a little bit about that. And, and we were talking before we actually started our cameras rolling today, you had mentioned a little bit about um, the importance of that relationship, establishing that relationship with a primary care provider. Obviously, primary care providers are kind of the starting point for if you have any issues and um, somebody to kind of be your advocate, but let's talk about the relationship part of that. What, what has been your experience here at Mile Bluff with you know, those relationships that are established between the primary care provider and the patient? Well, it's, it's been really nice too because when you establish with the primary care provider, it's important to build that relationship and people become loyal to their providers and they only want to see them. And we've had people who have, will drive a distance to come and see a provider here because they've built that good relationship. And I think I was mentioning to Kathy too, I'm like, I'm sure that it's not, I mean, you take care of the medical part of the visit too, but then there's, you know, how are your children doing? And mm -hmm. how, how is your family doing? And, you know, it's a really amazing thing to see. And not just from the providers, it's from pr the providers down in registration even we've had that mm -hmm. we've had I've it's been amazing to see the the sense of community that we've had here um, and I've I've been impressed by it since I the first day I came here people will come to registration and I'll, oh can I help you I'm like oh I'm gonna go down and see Cindy down there or I'm gonna go see Sally I, I gotta catch up with her and everything too right. I mean they build relationships with the people who worked here for sure. a long time and it always impressed me too that all the people that I talked to when I first started meeting people here have, I've been here for 20 years, I've been here for 30 mm -hmm. years, I've right. been here 15 years, I'm like, man, people, they come here and then they, they stay here because it's a great place and the, the relationships that we build with the community and everything mm -hmm. have been really, really amazing and I, I really appreciate it and that, that's how I found our provider, uh, my fiance saw him in urgent care and he really liked him so he recommended him to me and now my, the whole family sees him, so we've we've really built that relationship oh. with him, and so he, yeah, when how's how's Chad doing? How's how's the kids doing? And everything like that. So that's been a really important part, and I think it's a really important part of the primary care patient relationship. Absolutely. You know, I kind of wonder. You you talked about uh, longevity a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering. You know, in places where maybe the there's not as big of a push, where it's not part of their mission, as we've talked about last mm -hmm. month. Uh, to have everybody establish a primary care provider. I'm kind of wondering if in, in places like that, if there's less 
um, retention for some of the providers that are there because they don't build those relationships because they're just kind of there. Um, but you guys have experienced that the the providers here they tend to stay for a while. They do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think you know in terms of recruiting uh, new new physicians, new advanced uh, practice clinicians here, uh, one of the great uh, opportunities for new people coming in is they see that people have come here, really enjoyed the practice here, the community, taking care of the patients, um, and they tend to stay. They tend to establish a, uh, a career here in medicine, if you will. And that's kind of, you know, that's the other side of it to help take care of patients. There's continuity of our providers. Uh, so many of our providers have um, they've been here their entire career and they'll retire here. Yes. And, and it's a great, yeah, I think it's a great selling point for our patients because you have that continuity of care um, with, with your provider and you can expect it. We, we mentioned, I think, last month that a, a primary care provider should be the starting point at least. And if there's something that's beyond their scope of practice, they maybe go see a specialist. Are there any ongoing health concerns that would be just fine for a primary care provider to, to see a patient? Can you give me any examples of some things that people would not necessarily need to go see a specialist for, but that are still maybe ongoing health concerns? Yeah, um, for instance, diabetes. Um, some patients think that they have to see an endocrinologist right mm -hmm. away um, because they have diabetes and we manage diabetes every day, every single day. We have t hundreds of people with diabetes here, uh, high blood pressure. I'll have somebody come in and say, well, I, I need you to send me to a dermatologist. And I'll say, well, why? Well, I've got this mole that needs to be removed or I've got acne I can't get under control or I have a rash. I'm like, well, let's take a look at it. I think I could take care of that. And I remove moles and I do all of those kinds of procedures. So there's a lot of things that, that we can easily take care of here. And certainly if we feel like we're over our heads or, or definitely there's some more expertise involved, yeah, we will refer. Absolutely. Cindy, I'm, I'm curious to know, like, what can you, we just have about a minute left, but do you yeah. have any examples of uh, relationships that you've kind of built over the, your years of being here? Um, I think just relationships. I've been on my floor for six years now, mm -hmm. and people... People know you by name. People I'm know guessing. me by name. We know our, they know what goes on in my family. I know mm -hmm. what's going on in their family. I think the hardest thing for me is when <clears throat> um, we see a lot of geriatric patients on our floor, mm -hmm and we tend to lose those patients. And then if it's a husband and wife that's losing a spouse, yeah. you, you, you see them and you automatically just hug them and just yeah. give your condolences because- You really grieve with they, them, I You imagine. grieve with them. You, yeah. wow. Especially it's, yeah, so it's powerful. touching. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We have to take a short break. We'll come back in a moment. We'll continue our discussion of primary care providers here at Mild Health Medical Center after the break. Stick around. Welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Health. We're back here at Mild Bluff Medical Center talking about the importance of building a relationship with a primary care provider. And Kathy, I wanted to ask you, this is something that I've been kind of kicking around in my head. Uh, you are a physician assistant. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people will maybe mistakenly say, I need to go see my doctor when they're referring to you. Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly, first of all, what exactly is the difference? Is there a difference? And what does that mean for the patient? Um, physician assistants are trained in the same medical model as a physician, but in a much shorter time frame. So we do not get the complexity of training that the physicians do. Um, in the clinic setting, we do much of the same things as a, as a physician. But it is true, people will call me doc. Mm -hmm. Okay, doc. And I'll say, no, I'm a physician assistant. Ah, yeah. oh, well, you know, you're a doc to me. And, and so I tried a couple times and then I would never assume to be a doctor, right. but I but I try try to let them know, and then after that, I just kind of give up and say, okay, you just call me Kathy. That's they could great. just call you Pa. Mm -hmm. I know I did say that you call me Pa Kathy. <laughs> yeah, no, just you know, I say just call me Kathy. That's fine. Yeah. So um, so yes, but but like I said, in the clinic, we we do a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm. We often, I mean, I have my supervising physicians that I work with. Um, you know, I, I, I've been working so long, I feel very comfortable taking 
taking care of a lot of different uh, patients and types of problems, but I have my docs that I can go talk to sure. and get help from and, and get their input as well. And, and they often will do that with me too. Um, we all hate rashes and I've had doctors come and say, hey, can you come and look at this rash? So, <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's kind of a, we all very much, um, you know, help each other. Sure. Yeah. And you're working directly with the physicians that are there, and you can obviously tap into some of their resources as well, if need be. And you mentioned earlier that they sometimes, in some cases, become that specialist that a patient may be referred on to. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really a, a team approach. Um, having physician assistants and nurse practitioners as well as physicians really allows us to see many more patients. And, uh, you know, in a, in a world where physicians are in uh, great demand, um, having advanced practice providers who can uh, really expand our, our ability to take care of our communities uh, makes a big difference for us. And patients actually establish with Kathy as right. their primary care provider. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, they see her as the coordinator, as the person who's taking care of her. And uh, they trust her to do even, uh, you know, exactly what the physician would do when, it need, when they need more care. Mm -hmm. um, or if they can be handled uh, within, within their practice, then, then they trust that they can do that. So it's a, it's a great relationship and it's, a gr it's really a great system at Mile Bluff. And um, we've had uh, physician assistants and events practice nurse prescribers or nurse practitioners here for um, 30 years yeah long time and in fact uh, we're, we're a recognized uh, uh, location where people will come and do internships on their physician assistants and nurse practitioner so it's students part of the training a lot of good things going on yeah. here for sure definitely so if somebody uh, we talked a little bit about at the end of our last show uh, last month we talked a little bit about this new patient line that you have I want to kind of bring that up a little bit and make sure that people are aware of that. This is a new thing so that yes. obviously your mission is to get the word out and get people to choose a primary care provider. Um, so if they're watching right now, they can call this new appointment line or new patient line and hopefully get set up with someone. Is that right? Yes, correct. That's exactly right. So how does that, how does that work? What is the process? Well, um, they can start by calling the number the 608-847-APPT or appointment. I thought that was really, yes. really clever yeah. <laughs> on that. I'm like, oh, that's, that's so that easy to remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, it is a dedicated line specifically for new patients. Um, we estimated too, Cindy and I were talking, we estimated that when we take a phone call from a some, someone between getting all of their information, mm -hmm. kind of matching them up with the provider, uh, requesting records, uh, completing the paperwork that we needs to be done. We're talking anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. per person. And sometimes p patients will call in and they're like, I need to set up my entire family, which just, you know, adds to it too. So sure. this is where the new patient line is. One of the many great things about it is that there's a dedicated person to just, just do that part. Wow. And it takes some of the call law, you know, the call volume off of the receptionists in the clinic as well. Sure because th this would have been time that they were spending getting all the patient's information, their address, their phone number, their insurance, um, and sending out those documents to get records from other facilities. It, it, it frees it up for the patients, to, for other people to call in and leave messages for their providers and things like that. You know, and it's it's been a really nice process. We keep a log of all of our new patients and everything we keep, we're, you know, slowly and surely improving on the things that we're doing and everything and kind of making making the process really efficient and very helpful for new patients coming into the to the clinic so and how long has this number been operational April 1st April 1st so just April maybe a couple Fool's, Day. Yes. April Fool's Day yes Fool's Day and have you noticed a difference i mean are you taking fewer calls because some of those are going towards this new line now yes Cindy? Mm -hmm. okay. yes it seems wow. to be so um, another thing is too, brand new patients calling in and then if let's say you were a former patient, mm -hmm. you had to leave us because of Dean, you had to go to mm -hmm. another facility. If you've been gone longer than three years and you want to come back now because we take Dean, this line would be the line you'd want to call as well okay. and we'd help you get reestablished. Is it too early to tell um, uh, that are you getting more calls now because of this line? Because there's somebody who's dedicated? Because there's more people who can get through now? Definitely. Wow. Yes. Yes. Well, and we've made a, a, a big push to be more accessible to our patients. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we started to realize as we uh, looked at 
the health of our communities is that uh, providing access, easy access, and being able to get in to see a provider uh, was going to be one of those ways that we could expand people making a relationship with primary care, which is going to be the best in their best interest for health. And so we worked really hard to try to make sure that this process works for them and uh, is is easy to do, gets gets the information necessary for us to establish the care, but yet, um, you know, we can do follow-ups now with them. And so we've seen a great response to it. Now, we still have all of our other patients, right. and we work hard to make sure that they're yep. responded to. Um, and, uh, and in fact, we've expanded our our uh, times that, are, that, that our providers are available to make sure that we can get everyone in. We have to take a short break. We'll continue our discussion after the break here at Mobile Medical Center. Don't go away. And we're back here at Mount Bluff Medical Center for our show, Best of Wisconsin Health, talking about the importance of establishing a relationship with your primary care provider. So, one of the first things that somebody can do here at Mile Bluff uh, to establish that relationship is learn a little bit more about the providers that you have here on staff. So uh, provider profiles are on your website so people can kind of look that up and find out who might be a good fit for them. Are most people able to accept new patients? Are most of your providers able to accept new patients at this time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of our providers have agreed to um, try to see all the patients that want to see them. And so as a part of that agreement and part of their interest in taking care of our community, uh, they've, they've all made provisions to accept new patients as well as continue to treat those that have, they've been with them for right. a long time. And so part of what we're doing as an organization working with our physicians is to try to make that, that process as efficient as possible. Uh, the new patient care coordinators help uh, help to gather information in advance of the meeting uh, of the appointment mm -hmm. and do those kinds of things that will help us um, focus our providers time on the patient absolutely and it sounds to me like with some of these changes that have been implemented here more provider availability and a new new appointment line as well that more people are able to get in now because they have that mm -hmm. dedicated line mm -hmm. and there's more availability for the providers to see new patients but also current patients can take advantage of that too they can mm -hmm. yeah very good oh, go ahead. Um, and the with the patient profile or the provider profiles mm -hmm. that we have um, it's nice because p new people can get go online and then they can it, they're like little three minute um, videos of each provider kind of talking about their vision and how they practice and the type of people they see and uh, and it gives the new p uh, patients um, an, op uh, an opportunity to choose a provider based on those as well. And it should be noted that the providers that are listed on the website are uh, there are providers that you have five different clinics is that right mm -hmm. and so the providers that they can choose from they can choose from any one of five different clinics where are some of the clinics that you have where are all the clinics that you have uh, located um, the one here in Boston okay, yeah. and then we have satellite clinics in New Lisbon mm -hmm. Elroy Nasita and Lake Delton okay and, and patients can go and see uh, their provider at any one of those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep, so different providers right. in, in each one of them, yep. and, and yeah, it's, it's a good... And two, good with thing. the new patient um, line, <clears throat> we are scheduling for all the clinics. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in a Lake Dalton um, primary care provider, still use the main line to the Boston Clinic to set up your appointment. Okay, good, mm -hmm. that's good to know, so still mm -hmm. use that main line. Mm -hmm. Jim, you mentioned a couple of times about insurance mm -hmm. and uh, how you've recently uh, come to accept, or you are on the panel now for Dean, right. uh, SSM Health. So are there, are, are you pursuing relationships with other insurance companies in the future? Is that always something that you're looking to expand it's, to make it easier? It's an ongoing process. Right. We really try to work with our patients and the businesses that mm -hmm. provide insurance to their employees to identify, you know, what insurances are they considering, and uh, trying to make sure that we are on the panels of those insurance so that our patients can choose that. And businesses choose them for a lot of reasons. Many of the local businesses will reach out to us and, 
you know, let us know or ask us what insurance is as they're evaluating for their employees. But sometimes we get national companies that come in and become a part of an organization that's already here and they might bring their national health plan of which then we have to make sure that we lined up with that. And that's, you know, that's part of, again, our mission is to be available and to take care of the health of our communities. And as a way to do that, since insurance is often the payer of the care, right. we need to make sure that we have that relationship with their insurance. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to put some people on the spot here. Uh, since uh, kind of really grabbing this mission, I mean, I, I guess the mission really sort of began on April 1st, although you probably focused We've on always it. had it. You always <laughs> have had it. But, but uh, this kind of uh, new effort and getting new patients into the door, have you had any testimonials uh, either after uh, April 1st or before that at any time of people who maybe didn't have a primary care provider who got one, who chose one here, and it made a huge difference for them. I actually talked to a patient yeah, who... You probably talked to everybody. <clears throat> well, I talked to a lot of patients every day, yes. Um, I talked to a patient on Tuesday who I called to follow up with him after his appointment. Mm -hmm. um, when we do schedule you as a new patient, we will call you a week after to follow up to mm -hmm. see how your visit went. He said he had relocated here from somewhere in Illinois mm -hmm. and um, he met with one of our providers. Um, he said um, he was very grateful for the time he took to um, get to know him, um, went through all his medications with him, and he thought there's if he changed up, uh, one medication wasn't quite working the way he wanted, so the doctor made a change to a new medication. He said, please let him know that medication change has just made a world of a difference. Good. Yeah, so. Good, so establishing that Very happy, made first appointment, established a relationship, got Good. to know the patient, medications, and yeah, very happy patient. Good, mm -hmm. Good to know, good to know. Well, we've got about a minute left here, but is there anything anybody else wants to mention about the, just the importance of primary care here at Mile Bluff before we head to break? Well, I would just, you know, again, as somebody who has an ongoing medical condition, I'm mm -hmm. diabetic, the idea of establishing care with a primary care provider, somebody who gets to know you mm -hmm. and can really, you know, track these medications and, and you can have conversations about, you know, how, how is it going and, and, you know, how is your health impacted um, makes a huge difference and, and it makes a difference in life. Uh, you know, I manage my diabetes is in control, which makes me feel better, mm -hmm. and I'm able to live a happier and, and healthier life. And I, I think that's what primary care can offer the patient. Fantastic. Well, thank you all very so much. We're going to take a short break. We will come back with more Best of Wisconsin Health after the break. Thanks for joining me here today on Best of Wisconsin Health. We've been at Mile Bluff Medical Center discussing the importance of having a primary care provider. Tune in all week for health tips on better living right here on Best of Wisconsin Health from all of us here at TVW and Mile Bluff Medical Center. We invite you to live longer, live better. We'll see you next time.